Our story today is about Oda Nobunaga. He's the first of three unifiers that end the Sengoku period, also known as the Warring States period, and establish the Tokugawa period slash Edo period, a period of over 200 years of peace. So Oda Nobunaga is the son of a man named Oda Nobuhide. He's a minor daimyo living in Owari province, which is where today you can find the modern city of Nagoya. Upon his father's death, he inherits Nagoya Castle. And Owari province just happens to be next door to another province named Tsuruga province, where there's a much more prominent daimyo by the name of Imagawa Yoshimoto. So Imagawa Yoshimoto has full control over his dominion and has little pressure from outside neighbors. He's essentially bored and with no one to fight him, decides, why don't we just go take over Kyoto? We can take the capital from the current shogun, become the new shogun. Sounds like a good idea. Why not? It's not too far. But on his way to Kyoto is, of course, Owari province, where Oda Nobunaga is not taking any of it. It starts off on Imagawa Yoshimoto's side, though. He outnumbers Nobunaga 12 to 1. But he gets cocky and decides, hey, we're winning. We have the advantage. I have enough time to take part in a head viewing ceremony. Which is exactly what it sounds like. He's going to be looking at the heads of the enemies he has murdered. But Nobunaga uses this as an opportunity and under the cover of a thunderstorm, sneaks in, cuts off Imagawa's head and the heads of many other people. It's essentially the story of the tortoise and the hare. If the tortoise was to cut off the rabbit's head while he was in the middle of taking his nap. So after defeating Imagawa Yoshimoto, Nobunaga is now the strongest in the region and consolidates more power. All of Imagawa's men now become his allies, and that includes the future shogun, Tokugawa Ieyasu. So before we talk more about Oda Nobunaga, I would like to take a brief moment to talk about the history of guns in Japan. So for anyone who thinks that feudal Japan was all swords, I would like to introduce to you the Tanegashima. The Tanegashima is a type of matchlock firearm introduced to Japan by the Portuguese on the island of Tanegashima in 1543. In 1549, Oda Nobunaga orders 500 of them for his army. And what makes Oda Nobunaga one of the best military men of the Sengoku period is how he uses these guns. You see, the Tanegashima, like many older guns, had to be reloaded in between each shot. But Nobunaga despises a strategy where his men are organized in different rows. And while the front row is shooting, the back row has time to reload, which gives the impression of being able to shoot consecutively. It's pretty genius for this time period. And he's the first one to do it. So eight years later, Nobunaga decides to continue where Imagawa left off and goes to take Kyoto, which he does so successfully in 1568 and installs Ashikaga Yoshiaki as his puppet shogun. They don't get along though, and he gets rid of them in 1573. By 1576, he consolidates his hold on the area and builds a beautiful castle at Azuchi on the shores of Lake Biwa, which is near the capital. It's around this time that I want to bring up the bane of Nobunaga's existence, the badass warrior monks, the Iko Iki. Now the Iko Iki are followers of the Jodo Shinshu sect of Buddhism. They're mostly built up of priests, peasants, merchants, and even local lords. They oppose the daimyo. They wear traditional monk robes, but they use the naginata, swords, daggers, sometimes even guns. And they wear a banner with Buddhist slogans and chant the Nenbutsu and other Buddhist phrases as they fight against local daimyo, including Nobunaga. And Nobunaga hates the Iko Iki because they are frequently fighting him. And they're basically at war for a period of about 10 years, on and off. It sort of culminates with a raid against the monks in Mount Hiei in 1571, which is one of the absolute cruelest attacks that he engages in. Uh, and, and Nobunaga is a pretty cruel man to begin with, uh, does not shy away from killing his opponents. But in Mount Hiei, even his generals are pretty shocked by the savagery against the monks. 
He essentially surrounds the mountain and without warning murders every single person he can find, both by gun and by sword. And it's the destruction of Mount Hiei that makes him incredibly unpopular. And people are starting to think maybe he should be overthrown. The fighting between Nobunaga and the monks only ends after the mediation of the imperial court in Kyoto finally gets the monks to surrender at Hogan Temple in Osaka in 1580. And by the spring of 1582, Nobunaga has conquered most of central Japan and is attempting to extend his hegemony over western Japan. So in the next video, which will be coming out in the next few weeks, we will discuss the fall of Oda Nobunaga and how his quest to reunite Japan under his dominion comes to a screeching halt. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching and tune in next week. We'll be talking more about Japanese history and I'll have another one of these animated videos for you within the next three to four weeks. Uh, the animated videos take a lot longer, so please have some patience uh, while we get those up and ready for you. Bye-bye.